Hey everyone and welcome back to the SOLIDWORKS electrical implementation video series. This video we are going to talk about our title blocks and our title block manager in particular. Now again this is where all of our title blocks are stored not to be confused with templates like we talked about in a video previous video. Uh, our title blocks can be organized in a few different classifications here. We have our ANSI or our ISO, or maybe we don't want a title block at all and we just want to draw a really big schematic. Well, you can do that too. In the case of this, I have a lot of different types of title blocks. I have some custom ones that I've created. And so with that, they act the same way as a symbol. If I want to export or archive or unarchive a title block, just let it be known that the extension for the TEW zip is .title.tew zip at the end. So again, it's got its own extension specific for title blocks. Now, title blocks are pretty straightforward. It is essentially a symbol that's going to be built into that particular sheet. So when I'm working on the schematic, I can't necessarily edit the title block. I won't want to have the title block available for editing because there maybe there's a lot going on on my schematic. So if I need to edit my title block, I need to come in and find the appropriate title block and edit it from this manager here. I do also have the ability to edit the title block from the project from this specific sheet as well, it will still open it. But most folks, they come here to the title block manager and open it and edit it as necessary. Just like your symbols and your 2D footprints, if I need to create a new one, well, I can create new. I can also go ahead and copy an existing one and I can paste it and edit the copy. That's what I always find to be the easiest way to do things. So in this case here, I'm gonna go ahead, open up this title block and we can see a lot of the different information that I have available to me. First, down in the bottom right, we have our title block, all the information we may want to carry over into this particular title block. These are all the attributes that are available for a title block. We can see here on the left-hand side, there's a lot of different attributes that I can actually pull from and add to my title block. In this case here, I just have basic project information, the revision number, the size of the sheet, which won't change because the title block is sized to that. I also have revision information. And so there's a lot of information I can pull from here. One thing I didn't show in the symbol manager, any one of these attributes that I see here at the very top, there is an option for show attributes. And I can turn that on or turn it off and I can hide all the attributes altogether. I can show the attributes i can show an example of the attribute or just a description of what that attribute is because a lot of times the naming convention of these might be very obscure so in some cases even myself who's been using the software for a while it may make sense to come in and just check to see what the heck that attribute might actually be used for my insertion point for title blocks, I always, always, always have it set to the zero, zero mark, the bottom left corner of my sheet that I'm working on. Again, your title blocks are a DWG. They are in the project folder. Um, so you have to save this information when working with this. Now, the last big piece of information inside of our title block is our rows and our columns. In this particular case, I have four rows and I have eight columns all together. Now, how do I set this up correctly? Well, how do I want them set up? Do I want it to go A, B, C, D? Do I want it to go one, two, three, four? Or do I want it to go from the top down, one, two, three, four? All of that information is driven from the columns on the right-hand side. Maybe I don't want my sheet to look like this one. Maybe I would like to see my sheet let me see if i can find a good one here maybe i want only just the row i don't i don't necessarily care about the column so in this case here i have the position of of the first row uh, the number of the first row is going to start with a one and where it is so it actually starts from the the insertion point zero and the first position is going to be at about 
10.625 here, right? So that's where it's going to find it. And then that height. So from the height down, right? So I need a negative number to bring it down 0.52 every single time so that I get a total of 17 rows in this case. If I'm working with a vertical sheet, maybe I have 24 rows or 30 rows. So this may take a little bit of fine tuning and tweaking to get just right to get the appropriate number that I'm looking for in my sheet for my rows. So again, this is this is just how this particular sheet is set up. In this case here, when I'm talking about my rows, I wanted to start with a one. The first row position is going to be zero. So it's going to start down here and it's gonna work its way up two and a half each way to get me the appropriate number. So I hope this helps. It's pretty straightforward. It does take a little practice getting used to setting up your title blocks the right way. But once you understand the, the, the height and understanding if I want to put a negative to go from the top down, or in this case, two and a half, it goes from the bottom up. Uh, again, everything starts from the insertion point of that origin zero, zero. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.